but you're busy. You're playing something else, or maybe that game just doesn't look that good to you, and you give it a pass. You'll play it a bit later. And then over the next few days, all your friends are telling you how great this game is. You try and jump in like two weeks later, and everybody's talking code now. Sounds like a goddamn NASA explanation, and you just think to yourself, it. I can't play that game anymore. Not only that, the community starts telling you that if you don't follow this like spreadsheet of guides, you don't watch a million YouTube videos, if you don't do what these top players are doing, you're not even going to make it past the beginning of the game. Well, that's the situation I was in with Path of Exile. Every single day after the raid in World of Warcraft or over the weekend, in my discords, people will be saying, hey, you want to jump into PoE? A new league is starting right now. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, uh, okay, I'm going to play the SFZD, KFC, AT&T, BBP, and BP pilled. And you look at it and you go, I'll pass. Nah, it's okay. I don't know what the f*** that is. Well, can you go in blind? Can you go in without knowing anything? Do you need to read all those guides? Do you need to watch all those videos? Let's go in. Let's find out. That's where you play the intro, Chris. Whoa! So what exactly are the rules of this challenge going to be and where did it come from? Well, simple. My friend Quinn, who I've had the fortunate time to meet, always has these death compilations where he's raging and he's jumping on his desk and doing all those crazy things. And we got to talk about it on stream. And I put the video on and I'm playing it through and I don't know what the hell is going on. My only experience with ARPGs has been a singular playthrough of Diablo 3. I honestly had no idea how ARPGs worked. So Diablo 3 dropped and I only got it for free because Blizzard was giving it away free for World of Warcraft subscribers. I wasn't sure what I was in for, but I enjoyed the hell out of it until we killed Diablo and then the game looped around again. I was confused. Nobody up until that point had actually explained to me that this was like the normal difficulty and we basically have to play through the game four more times before we even start the end game to which I lost complete interest. I've always had a problem with straight loot farming. I understand the need for it in World of Warcraft, but I'm the first guy to ask to be benched. As soon as I have my gear that will make it easier for the next raid tier, I'm happy to not raid at all. So I was always the guy who was like, yeah, sure, I'll step out, no big deal. So when it came to watching this video of Quinn dying, I had one of our guys, Nups, explain to me what was going on and it was all gobbledygook. I had no clue what the hell he was talking about, and then the discussion came up. Yeah, you kind of need to know all this stuff before you get into the game. Well, I hate that. I love going in blind. That's part of what made me a Mythic Raider for like 15 years. It's figuring out the puzzle, overcoming the challenge, and if you've seen me play any variety games, I am no stranger to challenges, and I will smash my head against the puzzle if eventually we're going to get that sweet, sweet, satisfying conclusion at the end of it. So we said a thing. Let's do this. Let's try it. Let's go in blind. So the challenge is this. Can I complete the 10 acts? I got told there's 10 acts, so I'm assuming there's 10, which has some sort of end boss at the end of it. Can I do that without checking anything, asking for help, looking up a build, watching any videos, anything like that, as if I just solo bought the game? Now, of course, I'm streaming it, which can make things difficult, so we've had to do the awkward thing of hiding the chat, essentially. I pop the chat up on breaks, and I make it clear, do not spoil, and then we also have things such as Please do not try and donate or anything like that for spoilers, and we ban those people if they do that. So we've had no help at all. This is going to be my summary of day one. I'll jump back in after like three or four more days, because I am taking my time, because I want to explore the game, to let you know what I feel. All right, guys, let's go. The first thing we should cover is what are my expectations going into this? As I said, my only experience with a game like this is Diablo 3's easiest campaign, one playthrough. That's it. I never played any of the expansions, no Reaper of Souls for me. Always enjoyed my friends enjoying it and like vicariously hearing about it, but never played it myself. So I was a little worried, certainly about the talent tree. I was very afraid of what that was going to look like and making choices that would probably just maybe screw me up entirely. Uh, as in terms of the difficulty of the game though, had no expectations whatsoever. I figured that they would gently ease you in in some way. Now, I have finished my first couple of days playthrough as of recording this, and I do know that they buffed, apparently, the earlier acts of this game, and people were surprised that I did okay. I actually didn't die that much. So that was the expectation going in, is that I was going to get my ass kicked. I genuinely thought I would make early mistakes, and it would be a mess. So let's start with the class choice. No surprises to anybody that follows me. I went with the warrior barbarian style class. You give me an opportunity to crush a skull with a two-handed axe, 
I'm taking it all day. Never been a big fan of the ranged characters, but sometimes I am intrigued by things like witch doctors that do crazy obscene things, warlocks, that kind of stuff. But this time, first playthrough, I'm going to get in there with that big axe. Was also a little worried about this. There was a point in Diablo where being melee was a huge disadvantage and that ranged could just pull off magnificent things without having to deal with some of the same mechanics. Obviously, my World of Warcraft background also backs that up. Is occasionally melee just gets screwed, but still, I'm still going to roll with a two-handed axe. It's going to be the big warrior. The next thing that really surprised me was the setting and environment. Nowhere near as gloomy as I expected it to be. Again, I've got this Diablo bias in my mind, right? But I was really expecting, especially if you're going to be fighting hordes of minions, which is what the game's all about, that it's always so gloomy and so dark and so miserable. And as much as that fits and it makes sense... I like a bit of variety. I like a bit of spice. If I have the same zone over and over again, I get really bored of that. I want a different aesthetic. This did not disappoint. A totally different, much more toned down graphically than I, I would have expected from a relatively new game, but actually in full service of the game. It definitely looks like Path of Exile could run on a fucking calculator and actually was more than enough to signify the gameplay, which is the important part. I actually don't mind not having like cutting edge, bleeding edge graphics if the gameplay is fantastic absolutely fine with that and that is exactly what path of exile was all about so it's a really pleasant surprise to see that i got jungles i got different environments i got some green i got some grays i got some browns i got some reds i got some completely different maps and actually looked forward very much which i didn't expect to moving on to the next zone what is it going to look like sometimes i was in cathedrals and then sometimes i was out in a desert doing all these things murky swamps that kind of thing and then bright sun sunny areas Nice places to be. And the mob variety was also, like, surprisingly good. Some really creepy things that I actually, like, zoomed in on like a noob. Like, wow, look at this, look at this model. This thing is crazy. Uh, but obviously playing through it and defeating the first boss, uh, it was I got my first talent. And this is probably where it all started to get a little strange. Looking at the talent tree, I was, I'd was i seen pictures of it. Who hasn't? Even if you've never played Path of Exile, you've seen a picture of that talent tree. And usually people just go... I think, it, honestly, it feels like a bragging thing. Uh, now I've played around with it a little bit, it feels like something people show to try and get a little badge because they understand it. And obviously, people who haven't played the game don't understand it. And it just looks really intimidating and really scary. It's not, right? If you want to play Endgame, I have 100% can foresee just how complex and min maxi this thing can get. Any idiot can see that. But from the start of the game, surprisingly, it starts you in a place where the surrounding choices make sense. So I had to apply my kind of RPG, World of Warcraft knowledge to this and basically just went, what gives me more damage? That's what I care about. What gives me more damage? And part of that is tactical because I don't really know how gear works in the game. So I'm kind of going to lean on the talents a little bit more to make sure I don't just fall behind massively in damage. That's going to be something I'm going to want to do because I'm bound to make terrible gearing choices either early on or all the way through the playthrough. And if my damage falls off, I'm not going to be able to kill things. And that's going to be a big ass problem for me. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to lean more on, on the talent tree to try and prop up what I'm going to, the terribleness that I'm going to make with my gear. So I was just looking for things that gave more strength, gave just more two-handed damage, things like that. And using that as a basis, I actually started to fill out a tree that made sense to me. Now, I have no doubt whatsoever that the uh, experienced players, the Zizzes, the Quins, the Razes, the Steel Mages, all those guys are going to go, oh my fucking god, uh, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. But for me, it made sense and it played into how I wanted to play worked fine which i think is great like in the first days at least worked out absolutely fine like no problems at all never lacked damage always felt like i was doing reasonably well even if there was mobs that really hurt me i want to talk about them later i was able to dps them down and continue to progress forward keep moving forward one foot in front of the other that's how progress is done and i'm going to keep going that way one thing that did surprise me, and I had no idea about this, is that the skills in the game just come from gems. <laughs> I had no idea the game worked this way. And if you've never played Path of Exile, which I hope some of you watching haven't, uh, the way it works is you get weapons and armor that drops that have gem slots in them, like you've seen in many, many games. And they're colored gems. There's red, green, and blue uh, that I've seen so far, anyway. Um, and you get gems that drop that are actually abilities for your character. And all you do is you slot them into the armor itself, and you gain that ability as simple as that so you might get something and I, my favorite ability so far is heavy strike uh i found heavy strike made total sense for how i was playing i was hitting really hard with a two-hander so this is an ability that hit extra hard with a two-hander 
So that made total sense to me. He's like, that's a good ability. We're going to go with that. And I also went with something called Molten Strike, which did more AoE. Because, of course, you're fighting massive amounts of enemies. So I was like, okay, how am I going to do huge AoE damage? Because my Heavy Strike hits one thing. So I'm going to take this Mortal Strike, which, um, Molten Strike, which when I hit, shoots fireballs and drops lava around the area, allowing me to keep going with AoE. And that was kind of my bread and butter for day one, is just moving through that. Now then... This is where I actually got uh, the, the kind of scope of the game really opened up to me. Obviously, we've got that enormous talent tree. But then, and I'm so sorry to say this for experienced Path of Exile players, and I want to be clear on this, is they did put a tooltip in the game for this. I just didn't see it because I was so laser focused on putting skills into my, uh, into my, um, into my character that there's things called support skills. And these are gems as well. So I, every time for like the first three hours of the game, I saw a new gem drop, I kind of just thought it was another new ability. And some of them were like, Impale and things like that. I was like, well, I haven't really got Impale. Or, it, or Minion, it does something, with, just reading quickly, because the tooltips are quite large. So skimming over it, it was like, does something with Minions, does something with Totems. And I was like, I don't have any of those. So I'm just going to put them in my bags and I'll think about them later. Or maybe, we'll, maybe when I get an hour uh, to kind of read through everything I've picked up, then I can kind of check it then. But right now, it doesn't directly affect me. <laughs> Three hours in. Some sockets are linked together. Support gems placed in these sockets. Wait, what? Oh. Oh. Uh... Oh, shit. Oh, fuck my life, man. Wait, oh, none of my skills work now. Oh, what? Oh, this is terrible. But my gear is awful. Why don't you link? Oh, my gear is so bad now. I realized... That actually, these are augments for the skills you have in the weapons. So what you'll see on the weapons is these gem slots. Now, there could be one gem slot. There could be two. There could be three. There could be four. There could be five. And sometimes they have lines going to each of them. Not all the time. So you might get one that's got like... If I say it's got four gems in it, you might see it's got uh, three of those have got link lines. And one of them doesn't. Sometimes you'll find one that's got all four links. Sometimes you'll find one with four gem slots and there's no links between them. What it, the way it works is you put a skill, like I just said, into, into the weapon. I know I'm explaining this to people who are like, well, duh. Uh, but then you get this whole array, like a whole library of support spells. And what they do is change how that spell works. So I decided to go with something super basic, because obviously I haven't read anything. I didn't, I didn't really know what I was doing. But I ended up picking one that was like melee splash. So now my heavy... And if I, if I put that in a linked weapon, that means that my heavy strike will now splash and cleave everything around it. I also find one that summoned some guys every time I did it that repeated my ability on enemies nearby. So now I have, when I hit with my heavy strike, I now spawn a couple of guys that also hit enemies nearby and all of them melee splash. So I just do a huge AOE burst when I hit the target. That's when it really opened up to me. I was like, okay, yeah, there is like a trillion different combinations of things that I could do here, but not to the point where I was like, this is just too much. It was more a case of, what can I do next? And I think that's exactly what you're looking for in a game like this. Is Okay. Oh, I see it now. Ooh. I wonder if I can do this, this, and this. And then you start thinking in your head. It's like, wow, I could really like mix and match it. And you feel like a toddler who's got all these different colored blocks like Legos. And you're like, well, I could do all this with the Legos. Or I can make this. Or I can make this. And you could literally twist it and mold it into all these different shapes. The second thing that did for me, which is a feeling I don't get often. Because I have to be honest with you guys. One of the reasons I don't really play these games, I don't really care about loot. I've not been excited about loot for about 10 years, ever since I got my trusty Bulwark of Azanoth in World of Warcraft, which was the last time I really craved an item. That's why I still have this wonderful bag with me. That was the last time I really craved an item in a video game. Loot has kind of lost a lot of its meaning for me. But after the discovery of the gems and the support gems, it made loot much more exciting. Because now you started to think about, wait a minute, if I get like a two-handed axe, which really fits my build, and that has the gems in it that also support the skills I want to apply to that weapon. And perhaps it's even got four gems or five gems that are all linked. So I could maybe put four modifiers on this one spell. 
which could boost its melee, it could make them bleed, it could poison them, it could do all sorts of stuff, it could make them spin in circles, it could do all sorts of crazy things. That would be really cool to play. Not just make me do more damage, which is where my interest lies, right? My interest like falls off when it's a case of, oh, your damage goes up by X percent. I don't really care, right? As long as I can overcome my challenge, I don't really care. But when it changes your gameplay, <laughs> oh baby, magnifique. So that's when it really got exciting because then I was checking items to see what they got. And that's where I started to learn a little bit about the crafting system. Uh, the crafting system which allows you to modify these items in so many ways that I still haven't really got a grasp of it at all. I haven't messed with it yet. But you can re-roll the links. So if you do get one of those items that's got five gems in it and it, they're not linked, you can re have another go at it. It's RNG though, so maybe you're going to get like everything linked up. Maybe you're going to get nothing linked up. It's really a case of try, try, try. And these items are, of course, found by farming or buying them from vendors and things like that. Uh, but it also made you care about the colors because they have those three different colored gems. Now, the green gems will augment your spell in a different way and the blue gems will do them in a different way. So perhaps your idyllic weapon, and that's where the excitement comes in, and I felt it. And that, that's why I'm telling you about it because I often don't feel this way. I felt it. It's like, oh, it's an axe with three red and a green. Oh, you know, you genuinely got that excitement. And I felt that again, even in the very first day, is to have that in. And that definitely sucked me in to continue this project forward. Because I was like, oh, I'm actually kind of excited about this. I'm excited about a pair of boots. I'm excited about braces. I'm excited about a ring. And I haven't felt that way in a really long time, which made a lot of sense. Um, I was definitely very upset at the amount of bag space. Now, I'm coming from an RPG background, which is you tend to explore everything. If I'm doing anything from New Vegas to whatever, to Divinity and all the RPGs in between that we've played, I'm checking the corners, man, of the map. I'm looking where there's a hidden storyline, there's a, mis a hidden cache, there's some sort of uh, extra bit of a boss, there's some hidden rare mobs, things like that. I'm going to be scouring the map, which, and uh, because I can't, as yet, identify a good item, obviously I'm stopping to look at everything. And sometimes I'm picking things up like we do that might be good that I can maybe spend more time looking at when I get into town. And uh, what I found very early on is I was constantly out of bag space, constantly out of bag space. And I was like, oh, God, I hope I get a bigger bag. I'm now resigned to the fact that there is no bigger bag in the game, uh, which actually frustrated me. But it's a trade off. You don't get a bigger bag because the idea of the game is you can identify things you want to pick up rather quickly. And therefore, you wouldn't be—you don't pick up everything, right? As much as my heart and soul demands of me to pick up everything, so at least if I don't use it, I can sell it. That's not how the game works, and that's been a bit of a rewiring that's been needed in my head. But one that happened rather quickly, I think, relatively speaking. I still, to this to this day, is in the project. I'm still like, might be good, <laughs> you know. Some things are really tricky to see. Uh, I did kill uh, all the bosses. One shot most of them, died a couple of times on one, I think. Now, I want to mention the story a little bit here. Because I didn't know why I was killing the bosses. Uh, there are a few negatives. It's not all super positive. Like, one of the biggest negatives I've seen in the game so far is the story is really plodding. And it really took me out of it in two ways. So, the, the story is entirely voice acted. And the voice acting, from what I've heard, is phenomenal. It's really well done. It's just excruciatingly slow and very laborious like there's a lot of background there's a lot of world building going on which ordinarily i love like i've played some rpgs where i've listened to thousands of hours of dialogue and enjoyed it path of exile did not do that for me at all and i think not only was the was the storytelling in it really slow so it's done by just clicking an npc and then they'll break out into kind of a long dialogue and you might just want a quick answer. That happened to me a couple of times. It's like, I just need to know whether I go left or right here, to be honest. Or what, what am I fighting? And it often just ended up with, And then in the darkest day, the sun rose in the west, but it was covered in a cloud of blood. And on that day, the rabbits ran back into their holes. The cows returned to their barns. And the grass no longer grew. I'm like, okay, but where is the boss? You know? And it's, it's doing all that kind of stuff. And I ended up, unfortunately, like within an hour, I would say, clicking the quest NPC, which automatically gave you the quest. And just the quest, the quest description was like, go to wetlands, find guy. I was like, that's what I want to know. I don't want to listen to like four or five minutes of dialogue. 
Sometimes it may have been less, but I, by that point, I was no longer listening. Which meant, <laughs> unfortunately, I didn't really know why I was where I was doing what I was doing. Um, which is a shame. It's a shame. I would love to have had that context. But the trade-off is, this is a very fast-paced action game. And the way they work the story for the most part, besides some outdoor lore things that you can click on, uh, is that every time you return to town to like empty your bags or get rid of all the, con all the stuff you picked up and manage your inventory a little bit, there's usually four or five NPCs ready to give you like a whole spiel of dialogue. And they're marked with big exclamation marks like they are in most games. And it's just too much. It's like, it can be, it feel, it, although it probably is more like seven or eight or maybe even ten minutes of dialogue, it feels like 30 and you just want to get back out there. Like, the only reason I've returned to town is to just dump my stuff so I can get back out there and start slaughtering things. Because that's the game's strength. And I really wish they would have come up with a much more concise and better way of pacing this story so I could at least follow along with it without having to be like, okay, I kind of have to sit here for 10 minutes not playing the game. Because uh, you can't go out. You have to sit and wait for the story. That was one of the biggest letdowns I had so far. The other negative that I've found is kind of the same thing that inspired me to do this project in the first place, which is not knowing why I die. I only died a couple of times, nothing special. But there's a lot going on, especially in some of the amazing boss fights they have there. And for the most part, I'll say this, nearly everything is telegraphed really well. Certainly my mythic raiding experience came in clutch because I was able to analyze enemy patterns very quickly. I understood the routine and what they were doing and therefore was able to counterplay it very well. Um... I know that after I played the first day, people were very surprised I defeated some of the bosses and one-shot a lot of them because they died there a lot of times. But that's just my raiding background and gaming all the time stuff that helped me figure that stuff out. So I didn't have much of a problem with that. But when I did die, uh, it, I didn't know why. I'll be honest. Some, because the way the game works is you, you generally are 100% health most of the time. Because you have a shield, and you've got your HP, and they have this uh, flask system, which is kind of interesting. And I'm still building on that, because there's tons of different potions and things to use all the time that just constantly refill, so you can use them a lot. Um, is you would just be like, 100% health, smashing groups of enemies. 100% health, 100% health, 100% health. Uh, and then suddenly you would die, and you would literally go into a pack and just fall over and die. Or a boss would do something, and you couldn't really see the telegraph for it, and then you would just be dead. And there was no way of figuring out what exactly I died to, other than going back in and trying to work it out and, you know, spending more time. And sometimes not even attacking, just so I could see what it was. And then sometimes still not be able to figure it out. I would love something that's, and it might be in the game, but I haven't seen it. Some sort of little death log of uh, what happened in the last sort of like few seconds. Was, that, was something reflecting on me? Did I have a bleed? Did I take toxic poison? Was an arrow hit into me? I should be more aware of? Is it poison or something like that? So I'm like, oh, maybe I need more poison damage. I'm looking at it from the perspective of people who didn't counter as maybe as heavily as I did. A lot of the mechanics the bosses did and therefore <laughs> would be lost, right? They would be lost on what was going wrong uh, without having to then go and do fall into that trap that I see a lot of people talk about with PoE, which is like read a guide, maybe a boss guide, something like that. Uh, whereas, they, you know, just a few lines of what killed you uh, would be really like this was heavy damage you hit you you know took poison arrow or uh, slam hit you something like that and did all this damage something along those lines i think would be really nice just for general day-to-day -day working you know helpful things because i couldn't see at least from my perspective and again this is day one stuff i couldn't see without having to go back and either replay that boss multiple times or go and watch a video where somebody else explains to me what happens where i think that could be solved with just a tiny death log uh, of what happened in the game. So, so I could be like, oh, because you, when you die, I'm only saying this because when you die, you die so fast. You just fall over. Uh, and that's never particularly fun. Well, that's my day one so far. I have to say, I'm just extraordinarily excited. I can't wait to what's coming next. Uh, and I'm wondering whether I will, as many people have, have messaged me, I can't avoid things like Twitter and things like that, but nobody's giving me spoilers, but people are like, you're gonna fucking, you're gonna hit a wall real soon. Like it's gonna happen. With the way you're playing, you're absolutely going to nosedive pretty quickly. So I'm kind of excited for that to happen. I love a good challenge. So we'll see how that goes. And there you have it. Day one complete. Uh, <laughs> I love this game. This is fantastic. It's so good. It's everything I wanted out of an ARPG. I'm swinging a giant two-hander. Of course, I gravitated towards there because why wouldn't I? And once I discovered the idea of the support spells, the kind of scope, because I think that my first impression was I'd obviously seen the map of the Path of Exile talent tree, and it's very overwhelming when you just take it all in one image. 
that's actually not that bad. Although it's definitely clear how many different pathways you can go to really min-max your build. What was actually more eye-opening to me was that these skills have so many different levels of augments that go with them. And once I, once that clicked, once my head was like, oh, I see how this works. And it, I'm sad to say it did take me several hours to figure that out. The entire scope and largeness and the depth of the game really started to open up for me. And it was very exciting because the next thing that I can't wait to see is what my next new skill is. And I want something to, I can't wait to see it and read it so that I get excited again about, oh, I could do this, I could do that, I could do all these wonderful things. So that's what I'm hoping to see in the next couple of days. I'm very excited. I'm totally enjoying the game so far and I hope this continues. That's all I can say. Thank you so much for watching guys and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.